afternoon, everybody. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. My name is Andrew Heishman, and happy Sunday, August 11th, my friends. We got ourselves a lot of updates on the storm. There's a lot of differences since last night, as we were expecting. If you guys were here from yesterday's live stream, you would have noticed how I was saying that this thing will probably look a little more interesting in the morning, in which it sure does, my friends. Anyways, we're just going to get on into it, my friends. we got a lot of stuff to talk about. So first of all, here's the satellite view. This is the current storm just east of the Antilles. Uh, and if you look closely on those uh, lower, kind of the white there, you can kind of see how this thing has a pretty good circulation now. Uh, this thing is rotating pretty well, which is obviously some good news uh, for the storm itself. Now, uh, whenever it comes to, you know, those storms, obviously you see there's a bunch of scattered thunderstorms with these kind of brighter colors here. Um, we need a lot of those storms to come towards the center of the storm. Um, so we're kind of just waiting on that uh, overall, uh, which that could happen at any time. And once that starts to really happen, then the, there will be a good likelihood that this thing will be transitioning into a tropical depression. Right now, it's still an invest, which is basically just an investigation. Uh, it is not a tropical depression yet, but it is very, very close. So let's go and hop over here to the Hurricane Center's page overall. So overall, we got ourselves a 90% chance of overall formation. You guys can see in the bottom right there. I know it's kind of hard to see, my bad. Uh, but throughout the next seven days, throughout the next week, we have a 90% chance of this thing becoming a tropical depression or a tropical storm. It's, it's going to happen. It's, it's At this point, yes, it's going to happen. Uh, and even throughout the next 48 hours or the next two days, we have a solid 80% chance of formation. So there is a... Good shot that this thing could become a tropical depression or a tropical storm within the next two days as well. So there's a pretty good chance that we could have that uh, overall as well. Anyways, let's go and take a look here at the spaghetti models, my friends. So here's the latest guidance. Now, I do, I'm, I'm getting a little concerned for some of these areas um, out there towards, I know it's kind of hard to see, but there's Bermuda, that little speck there. I'm a little concerned for Bermuda. As we dive into the weather models, you're going to actually see how a lot of those models do have this thing going right over, if not right next to Bermuda. Uh, if you live in Bermuda, if you're going for vacation to Bermuda, please watch this storm very closely. Um, and honestly, I would even possibly recommend maybe rescheduling your vacation if you can, uh, because there is a good possibility that this storm could have some impacts on Bermuda. I mean, even if it doesn't directly go over Bermuda, even a close call can still cause some rough seas, making it almost impossible for you to go out in the water because there'll be so much rip currents and all that concern so please uh just be careful out there if you do live there please be careful watch the way like i said watch up for the latest updates we'll keep you all updated on that but you know like i said that's going to be a pretty good uh possibility that we could have this thing coming near uh bermuda now it's not just bermuda that we're going to be watching we also need to pay attention out there towards the lesser antilles especially the leeward islands as well as puerto rico uh it does look like the storm is going to be passing over you guys so make sure you guys are ready for a tropical system make sure you have your hurricane preparedness, everything like that, all in check. Uh, just, you know, while you can, if you could, uh, just make sure you stock up on, you know, non-perishable foods and some water if you could, um, as well as make sure you have your first aid kit, you know, just your important documents, all of your stuff in one area, your safe spot, um, because like I said, there's a good chance that this thing ha you know, could have some impacts down in time. So I want you guys to remember these numbers. This shows 48 and 72, okay? So this is 48 hours from now, 72 hours from now, so for the, for the next two to three days, or two to three days from now, that's where the storm is going to be overall, but remember that, okay? Anyways, so let's go ahead and hop on over here to the intensity. Now, this is where those numbers are going to come important. So 48 to 72 hours, uh, the middle point, so the uh, the average here, roughly, uh, according to the uh, uh, the hurricane model. So this is basically the intensity overall. Uh, you can see throughout 48 hours, we have a tropical storm expectancy. 72 hours, maybe even an upper tropical storm. So there's a good potential. Uh, most of the models do agree on the potential of there being maybe a, you know, maybe a mid-upper level tropical storm as it rolls over like the Lesser Antilles uh, throughout portions there of Puerto Rico. So that could be a really big concern, okay? So make sure that you guys are, once again, if you're in that area, just make sure you have everything prepped. So once again, the Leeward Islands and the Antilles, uh, Puerto Rico, uh, as well as Bermuda. I really want you guys to be watching this storm very, very closely. Honestly, Eastern Dominican Republic won't even hurt to be watching it as well. Um, so we'll definitely keep it out there for that overall. But anyway, so that's the latest guidance. Now, overall, you can actually see how uh, the middle point easily gets up into hurricane strength. Now, this is my opinion. I really believe that this storm would have a good shot at becoming a major hurricane later down in time. It doesn't look like there's going to be much wind shear uh, or a lack of moisture, per se, uh, to allow the storm to uh, kind of, you know, maybe slow down on this development. No, it looks like it's going to be conducive for rapid development over the next several days. So 
unfortunately, I really do think this could be a potentially big hurricane, uh, maybe by the time we reach Bermuda, if we get even near Bermuda, which it seems quite likely at this point in time, so we'll definitely keep an eye on it. Obviously, there is still time for the models to shift a little bit out there by Bermuda, but as of right now, it looks like a lot of the models do have it heading on in that way. Anyway, so here's some more ensembles, basically just more spaghetti. I mean, this is just one model, but it just has a bunch of little members here. Uh, once again, you can see all of them going up. So this thing is expected to go out to sea. Here's even some more of them. Uh, you can see all of them. You know, even the hurricane models, whenever it comes to everything, everything has this thing going out to sea. So there's no risk across the United States. Definitely happy to say that. Uh, but overall, this could once again be a problem for the Eastern Caribbean, as well as portions out there by Bermuda. Alrighty guys, let's go ahead and hop on into the weather model. So we're starting off with the American GFS here. We work our way down in time right here for August 13th. By the way, the time's in the top right. I know the date's a little cut off here, but that's August 13th, uh, right around 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, the storm will be right over, you know, areas of the uh, Lesser Antilles by the Leeward Islands, heading up out there towards Puerto Rico, uh, then continuing to the north. Now, unfortunately, the GFS has this thing literally going right over Bermuda. Uh, I know it's kind of hard to see. So that you see that little speck right there? It's very hard to tell. That's Bermuda, and look what happens with the GFS. The GFS has that going right over Bermuda. Uh, with the central low around 963 millibars. That would be roughly around a Category 2, maybe near Cat 3 strength, uh, according to this model. Now, this one has it... Uh, kind of going up there towards like uh, eastern Canada, but then, but then kind of turning last minute. Uh, obviously, this far down in time is, you know, just a little too far to look at. It's just, you know, unknown. There's a lot of error margin here uh, once we get to this point in time. So we'll need to watch out there for eastern Canada maybe as well. Just keep an eye on it. Once again, you know, there's no immediate uh, impacts expected for like, eastern Canada or those areas as of right now. So there's no reason to freak out. But, you know, just watch it. We'll keep an eye on it. Uh, but yeah, this one has it going right over Bermuda. Now, the latest uh, European model, this is the ECE and or sorry, ECMWF. Uh, this is the latest, uh, her, or sorry, this is the latest uh, European model here, uh, and it shows this depression going right over, um, like I said, uh, the Leeward Islands out there towards uh, the Lesser Antilles, as well as near Puerto Rico. This one has it a little bit weaker and not really picking up some traction until we get above Puerto Rico. Uh, the previous model before that, that's where the model ends on that run. Uh, but yeah, so then we continue going to the north. Now, unfortunately, this one agrees with the GFS right on. That little speck right there, that is Bermuda, and it has the storm going directly directly over it that could be a really really big problem so two of the main models the gfs and the european ecmwf show the system going right over bermuda that's why i really am a little concerned for you guys out there um, because of the way it looks right now you know it seems like we could have some impacts out there now the reason that this one's going out to sea uh versus other storms like debbie you know how debbie kind of was expected to go out to see it to begin with um but then ultimately went to the Gulf. This storm, it's not going to happen with this storm. Uh, and the reason why is this, we have, we typically have a pretty strong high pressure in the Atlantic. Uh, you can see this big old circle here. This is just a big dome of high pressure. And what's going to happen is that high pressure is going to get squished to the east out there in the eastern Atlantic, which is going to kind of open the doors for the storm to kind of roll through. And on top of that, we have another area of high pressure right over eastern North America between Canada and the United States, which is going to help kind of squeeze it right between because uh, these high pressure systems act like repellent for hurricanes so basically what's going to happen is that that high pressure between the two it's just going to open the doors and the storm's going to flow where the lower pressure is so it is going to go right between these areas here more than likely so that's why we believe that this one is definitely going to be a fish storm more than likely it will all the ensembles all the models do talk about it so that is what is expected now one other thing i do want to look at real quickly uh hopping back to the gfs model uh so this is what i also wanted to talk about this was the uh, this is the moisture y'all uh basically looking at you know the atmosphere and how high the humidity is the higher the humidity the more capable it is for developing thunderstorms and overall strengthening the system uh, which that can be represented in the bluish green color now we work our way down in time you can see where that low develops so this just has a big blob of a very humid air that should allow for a lot of thunderstorm activity to occur and it like i said it doesn't really seem like dry air is going to be too much of an issue obviously off to the east and off to the west there's a bit of dry air but that's not in the storm itself the storm itself is going to have a really good amount of moisture so that's why i'm saying it, any weakening with that isn't really expected although maybe in its later life as we approach near uh, the mid-atlantic or just off the coast far to the mid-atlantic but you know the same latitude here uh there might be a possibility that the storm overall uh you know could 
ingests some of that dry air as it kind of rolls up to the north here. We obviously don't know that quite yet, but that is a possibility. Uh, and on top of that, another thing I wanted to look at is the wind shear, because the wind shear uh, really determines uh, basically, you know, uh, if the storm can stay together or not. Uh, obviously, we have the big old jet stream right here, and that's the storm itself. Uh, and you can see as that low pressure system, as that storm uh, rolls its way to the north, it kind of gets caught up in that jet stream, which would possibly, in theory, allow for the storm to kind of weaken as it kind of gets ripped apart by the jet stream itself. Uh, and that will increase its forward motion, taking it and moving it a lot faster up to the north uh, there overall. So between wind shear, at least in the beginning part of its life, you know, as it goes through the Caribbean up towards Bermuda, um, it should be relatively uh, mild and shouldn't have a problem on the storm at all. But once we get above or near Bermuda or above, uh, that's whenever, you know, the jet stream can really take a hold of the storm, uh, rip it, you know, rip it apart, basically, and also, you know, make it move a lot quicker. Um, so that is overall what I wanted to talk about. Now, uh, when it comes to like CMC, this is another weather model here. Uh, we're just going to look at all these models. So the CMC has it going right over the uh, the Lesser Antilles and the Leeward Islands. You know, maybe as a depression, uh, maybe getting near tropical storm force as it passes towards Puerto Rico before strengthening, pulling to the north. Now, unfortunately, you can actually see there's Bermuda right there, that little speck. Um, according to the CMC model, this one actually has it going right over as well. All three of the models, the main models, are showing this thing going right over Bermuda. That's why I'm a little concerned for you guys out there. So just please, if you live in Bermuda, watch this one closely. Um, Icon, here's another one. Everyone loves this model for some reason. Um, so the Icon, you know, even shows it as well. Uh, maybe a little bit more to the west, but still in those uh, potential tropical storm and hurricane bands, um, according to uh, the Icon. And this one has it getting pretty strong. So, you know, like I said, overall, all these models... In the late forecast really has this thing becoming a monster i really do believe that this storm has a good shot at becoming maybe a major hurricane this could be our first major actually sorry our second major hurricane of the year i almost forgot uh, about barrel so yeah barrel actually uh, became the first major hurricane the first hurricane of the season uh it was a category five which is crazy but like i said you know with this storm here i do think it has a good shot at becoming a major hurricane obviously regarding her category five we don't know that quite yet uh, as of right now i'm not seeing anything like that but you know, I, I think overall this thing does have a good shot at maybe becoming a major hurricane overall. So now let's work our way over here to the main hurricane models. This is the HWRF. Now we work our way down in time. Now here's the thing. This has the storm uh, becoming a bit more organized here, maybe in the 990s. So a uh, possible tropical storm out there in the northern Antilles towards the Leeward Islands. You can actually see this is the upper portion of the Antilles. Um, and there's a possible tropical storm, you know, 995 millibars. It's you know, right around tropical storm force. Uh, then we continue going to the west here, and this thing becomes a hurricane as it approaches just east of Puerto Rico uh, before continuing up here to the north, really picking up some speed, unfortunately. Uh, and that's kind of where the model ends overall. Now, honestly, look at this, guys. This is the infrared view from the HWRF. Absolute monster uh, of a storm is presented here. So, like I said, you know, once we pass those uh, eastern Caribbean islands and as we go up into the water... That's where I think we're going to have a really big issue uh, with the storm becoming even bigger and even stronger. So we'll definitely be looking out there for that, my friends, and uh, we'll keep you all posted. Uh, now, one last model I do want to go ahead and go over here. This is the HMON. Uh, this one actually has it going slightly north of the leeward, although still some tropical storm activity could be possible uh, before pulling up here to the north overall. And that's kind of where the storm, or sorry, the model ends. Uh, but it has this wind field. Look how massive this wind field gets. I mean, it's an absolute beast. Uh, of a storm here overall so you know like i said all the models really have this thing picking up in some intensity once it passes the eastern caribbean so that's what gives me a little bit more concern for bermuda because you remember a lot of those models most of those models had this thing going right over if not right next to bermuda so once again please if you guys are in the bermuda area uh if you plan to go to bermuda please be careful if you live there obviously be prepared i would obviously start preparing if you could Obviously, I know this is a couple, you know, still several days away. There is still some things to change, but obviously, the earlier the better. Um, so we want you guys to get ready for this, as this could be a big issue, especially Bermuda being a lone, lone island out in the middle of the water. That would be a big problem uh, for you guys, like regarding, you know. Uh, obviously waves you know storm surge and all that concern um so just please be careful out there but anyways my friends well that's what we're going to be dealing with here uh let me go ahead and go over this real quickly we have our new merch page if you guys want to take a look at that be greatly appreciated we'll leave the link down in the description 
be much appreciated, my friends. Once again, I appreciate y'all for joining here. Once again, thank you. I appreciate all of your support. We'll be live again later, or sorry, we'll be live tonight uh, around uh, 8 o'clock or so, 9, 8 or 9 o'clock uh, Eastern time. So I hope to see you guys there for a live update with new models and everything like that. But once again, everybody, thank you for joining. Hope y'all have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll catch you up later on. Peace out, my friends. See you in the next one.